It is a show that captured the hearts of millions during its initial run, and now it's getting a new life on the same network. And its second season, the latest version of The Wonder Years, follows a middle-class black family with their story told from the perspective of their young son. Armona Kosar Abdi spoke to actor Dulé Hill about what it's like to step into the role of a black father in 1960s Alabama. What would you do if I sang on a tune? It's a song that's become synonymous with the show that used it as a theme for six seasons. Debuting in 1988, The Wonder Years was originally a coming-of-age suburban sitcom about a family navigating the late 60s and early 70s. It's now been reimagined through the perspective of a middle-class black family living in Montgomery, Alabama during the same time period. I sat down with Dulé Hill, who portrays the patriarch of the Williams family, to tell us more about the second season of the ABC sitcom. So second season of The Wonder Years. It is now summer of 69. Your character Bill has a songwriting gig. Can you explain mm -hmm. to me why that the significance of the summer of 69 and why it's such a pivotal and historical time period? Uh, that's a very good question. For, in, terms, in terms of Bill Williams, he was trying to expand out into a new place, into a get out of his comfort zone, take his career a little bit further, and he ends up in New York, and he, he becomes a fish out of water. He's a fish out of water, and he's trying to, uh, I guess, find his way. But uh, in terms of why it's a pivotal moment of Summer 69 for the Williams family, it really is just a time of change, a time of growth, and a time of them evolving. And speaking of growth, I love coming-of-age stories because you actually see the characters grow, and especially with your son just aging on mm -hmm. screen right in front of us. But even with your character and how his career is going, writing songs for Marvin Gaye, for example, why is it important to show um, you know, the progression of his career and the milestones that we now see? The guys at the studio say my music wasn't what the kids are dancing to, so I need you to let me know when I'm on to something. Uh, okay, sure, I guess. Well, I think it's important to show because that's what we do in life. Mm -hmm. In life, we never we're, we never stay stagnant. We're always evolving. We're always growing. We go through times we have great victories. We go through times where we have great defeats. There's times where we are very confident in, all, in who we are and what we're doing. There's times that we are unsure and trying to find our way. And speaking of like the parallels that we're seeing, um, in some ways, the plot lines that you guys go through we're seeing in real time today. For example, um, your neighbor Lonnie, mm -hmm. um, played by Titus Burgess, mm -hmm. he is in drag and that conversation now about just, you know, um, the politics around drag, for example, is very relevant today. The guy in the dress. Dad had told me not to stare, but he also told me to always look adults in the eye when I spoke to them. He got me in the spin cycle, Dad. Uh, yeah, I must have left my key inside. Hmm. You don't sound like you from around here. I'm from Alabama. Montgomery. It's the capital. Child, I know where Montgomery is. I'm from Union Springs. Well, that's one thing I appreciate about the shows that they're able to do parallel stories, or parallel timelines, really. But then in season two, what I appreciate is that we continue to expand the lens because men dressed in drag are not new. We, they've always been here. They will always be here. And to be able to highlight that on our show, I think, was a wonderful thing. But the thing that was really powerful to me was the fact that Bill was uncomfortable when he first met Lonnie. He was unsure. It was something new, something different, because he that's what happens when he stepped out of his world and kind of let his world expand. But in the midst of their conversations, in the midst of when he made the choice not to pass judgment, but to actually communicate, they were able to find uh, some semblance of a friendship. They were able to find a way where they could actually, places where they could meet, and they were able to find a way where they were able to help each other along the way. And that's something that I think that we can take from the television screen to our life. If we can do that in our society, we'd be in a much better place. And for the second season, how do we see the characters grow, namely Bill and Dean? Mainly what we see seeing in the second season, season one was really about the Williams family and how they interacted with each other. Season two is how the Williams family interacts with the world around them. So going into the second season, we have a lot of guest characters coming through. We have Pat LaBelle, we have Bradley Whitford, we have Malcolm Jamal Warner, we have Jack McBrayer, Donald Faison, we had Titus Burgess already, and so the list goes on. You know, Mama, I'm a bit of a singer myself. Well, my tenor section is full, baby. But really, it's seeing how these characters now start to interact with the world at large. And I think it'll be very entertaining. There'll be a lot of heart, there'll be a lot of humor. And uh, I think the audiences will enjoy it. Even with reboots, remakes, you always want to put your own spin yes. and mm -hmm. have this generation, right, relate to the Wonder Years and have their own experience mm -hmm. with this Wonder Years. How do you think the show does that now? The original Wonder Years, as wonderful as it was, it did not have a lot of 
people who looked like me. It did not, it really cut out a whole section of life. This show, I think, really expands, expands the world. And then I think also what the show does is that we bridge, we bridge gaps. What is it like stepping back in time and being in that time period? Oh, it's great. I love that time <laughs> period. You know, you know, back then everyone was very particular about how they looked, what mm. they wore, how they walked, how they talked. <laughs> Everything mattered. Yeah. And I really appreciate being able to step back into that time and put on those clothes, literally, for, for, you know, for some time. It's a, it's, it's a great character to play. Uh, I'm really honored to be able to show the black father with the family, a black father who loves his children, a black father who is there for his children, and a black father who is learning at, along the way. He's not, a, he's not a know-it-all. He's somebody who can listen, challenge himself to grow, and he can evolve. And I think that's a beautiful thing to, to portray on the TV screen. Good morning. Maybe you should take some advanced math classes. Mama. Don't talk back to your mother. And you're going to drive her. You touched a little bit about the original Wonder Years mm -hmm. and how you, know, you didn't have the representation that we're seeing on the screen mm -hmm. now. How important is it to see a middle-class black family on the screen and their interactions, their human interactions? I think it's important because what well, they always say representation matters. And once you can see that, then you realize that one, it's achievable. You can realize that it's not something new and that we've always been there. I'm kind of ju jumping track a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, like with, uh, it was a big thing on, when I did The West Wing, when Charlie dated Zoe and had an interracial relationship. And it was a huge thing when we had Jimmy, Jimmy Smith win the presidency. But I think there's power in television. I think when you show things on screen and you're in, entering people's homes in their most comfortable place, they can take the time to re receive things and, I guess, open their mind to other possibilities. Having the Wonder Years on television every week, having a black family, a middle-class family shown on network television every week, I think really can let people know that it's not always what we see on the news. <laughs> that black families have always been there, they're here now, and they will always be here. I think that's a very powerful thing. Our thanks to Mona for that. The Wonder Years airs Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on ABC. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.